I V M. Hello, everybody. This is another new episode, and today I'm super excited because today we have a guest who I have looked up to since a couple of years because I stumbled upon the name JC in the last couple of years because I ventured into the online fitness space, and everybody was like, "Okay, you need to know about Fitter. You need to know about Fitter." And I did my research, and it blew my mind how big Fitter was. I really wanted to get, or I would really wanted to be a fly in the wall in the conversations that the team of Fitter had. Uh, I just wanted to understand like how these guys are working, how these guys are like building up something so massive in the Indian fitness space. And I think today is my lucky day because I literally have the owner and the founder of Fitter. So congratulations, guys! We have uh, the founder of. Uh, fitter over here, Mr. Jitendra Choksi, and yeah, I'm super excited. Hello, JC. Hi. So happy that you're here. Thank you for coming on the show. Hi, Kunal. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure, and looking forward to you know have a amazing conversation. Lovely. First of all, let me just start off uh, by saying that you are in an amazing shape, man. What kind of like Workout patterns are you following? Do you like follow a lot of like strength hypertrophy based programs, or you have a proper conditioning based workout program? What kind of like ideology and modality of workouts do you follow? Um, my approach towards uh, fitness has changed evolved over the years. So, in in my primitive in my former years, I was more focused on strength training, conditioning, but now I'm going towards almost everything. Right. So, if I see something which is cool, I kind of want to do it. Uh, and strength training kind of Forms a base for it, so I'm doing boxing, doing martial arts, um, doing calisthenics, a bit of uh, you know learning different kinds of skills like bow stuff, nunchucks, and stuff. So yeah, uh, it's a mix of everything, but uh, weight training is still the base. Like five days, I have to train uh, weight training, and that is the beauty of it. No, you can always like once you develop enough uh, exposure towards the strength. Uh, basis once you develop enough muscle mass and once you are like accustomed to that kind of strength work you can yeah. always venture into different modalities and keep experimenting and see what are what are the limitations of your body and where you really find the love for the movement yeah absolutely i think it in fact it uh, helps in fact today i was for the first time trying to be boying and uh-huh. uh, yeah so my my teacher he's a he's a friend he came to my house and today was our first class and uh, today he taught me how to do a baby freeze And I said, "It's okay if you don't get it today, and uh, it'll take a couple of weeks, but you'll get there." And he was shocked to know that I could do a baby freeze very easily. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think strength training is super critical. Any kind of sport, I think strength training can form a very uh, important basis for. And I think it becomes very, very easy if you want to switch from you know one thing to another over a period of time because strength is you know. Like your muscles are already trained for movement, they're already yeah. trained for hypertrophy, and uh, it just becomes a lot more easier if you do resistance training. Yeah, I'm super happy to know that you could actually nail the baby freeze in the first attempt itself. Are you one of those people who take it upon themselves that you know what? I think I can. If somebody else can do something physically, I think I'll be able to nail it in the first couple of tries or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that I I think uh, we both resonate on that because I think you have that kind of confidence about your body after a point. You know what are the limitations of your body, and you know that how much you can push. And yeah, yeah if you have proper guidance, you can always pull off. So yeah, man, congratulations on like <laughs> figuring out baby free girl. Like I really want to like try it out. Let's see how that thing goes. Awesome. But yeah, I'll tell you some background about myself. I'm super new in this online fitness space. I started with an online. Session online group classes called as Unlock from Instagram live sessions because that was trending just before pandemic. So we created a community of like three thousand five hundred people over the course of one year, wow. and now Unlock has kind of grown over from Instagram, and now it's on different platforms altogether. So we do our live sessions from Zoom. Then we have a WhatsApp group, such community, community, all the thing. Uh, we are setting up an entire platform and all these things, and it has taken 
a good amount of time from unlock to reach from zero to now say 8,000 people. Speaking of what Fitter has achieved in the years, you guys are reaching out to 30 million people in the country or more than that. If I'm wrong, please correct me. So far about 3.5 million. That's phenomenal. Okay. So I just wanted to understand, like if you had to introduce Fitter to anyone these days, how do you introduce it? (laughs) Well, I mean, we make people fit and that's about it. Well, that's a way to put it. But right now it's only an online fitness ecosystem or it has like uh, transcended beyond the online part and it has like grown over to every different cities of the country and beyond. Uh, It has grown beyond uh, even India. I mean, we have a lot of people uh, outside India as well, but it's still online. So just like social media is everywhere um, and it's still online, we continue to build Fitter everywhere, but continue to remain online. That's lovely because the scalability and the reach that online fitness would have is right. phenomenal, right? Yeah. So how did you start your journey? Was it from those Facebook groups, which I've seen way back or it was, I, I'm pretty sure that it happened way before Instagram became the primary platform for a lot of fitness influencers and fitness trainers to go and reach out and upload content. I yeah. think we're talking about Twitter being developed on Facebook itself way back. So when did you start this entire journey? How did you start it? So it was around 2013 when I when I took part in certain competitions, 2013, 2014. And I started posting my pictures on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the time, I think Facebook was still pretty cool and hip, right? And so some of my friends and family members approached and they asked me if I could help them get fit. So we created a small WhatsApp group where I started training them um, in fitness and nutrition. And I think most of the people underestimate how big of a role nutrition plays, right? So when, when the nutrition part was sorted, they started getting results which they could not. Like they were training for years, but they were still not uh, able to, you know, get down to uh, lower body fat percentage. They were not seeing results. But when the nutrition thing was uh, dialed in properly, they started seeing results. And I think when they reached out to other people and told them that, hey, look, there's this guy who's been giving fantastic nutrition and training plans and they're working other people started approaching me and uh, around the same time I had about 200 odd people who I was training largely free because it was just for fun. I'm also an ERP consultant. So I've spent some good time in IT. So I was doing it for fun. And uh, yeah, from WhatsApp, then, you know, when when more than 200 people started coming to me, I was like, okay, WhatsApp's not going to cut it. We'll have to take them somewhere else. So created a small group on Facebook. Before that, there was a page. So the squad space, the Twitter page was still there where I was uploading my pictures and everything. And then we created this Facebook group. And uh, obviously, I did not want this to become my my primary job. And I was just doing it for fun. So I said, instead of me training you, how about I start educating you? So I wrote a small booklet called Get Shredded, uh, which was about 30 pages back then. And I uploaded it on that Facebook group. So people downloaded the book. They read everything that was written on it. And then they transformed and then they you know, posted their transformations in the group, seeing which more people joined. And so it just kind of triggered a perpetual cycle and people kept joining. They started asking questions and I was there. So I started answering and kind of became a thriving community. We set some rules, you know, a no nonsense kind of an approach. We strictly told that this group has to be like pure, uh, no spamming, no endorsements or any such thing, just pure education, right? So I think those early decisions where we wanted to focus on a no nonsense uh, no nonsense educative approach is what really got everybody's attention and so by the year 1 we had about 50000 people in the community itself right and so around the same time people also started asking me again that hey jc mean, this information is really great but we don't have accountability and we don't have motivation and i think if you train us personally we are ready to pay you uh, we'll get better results. So that gave me an idea. Okay, look, um, it's not the information. It's it's a lot more than that. You know, It's the behavioral cycle, which is messed up. Like information is out there anyways. So then I came across this idea that, hey, instead of me training these folks, if I educate some people who can then coach these guys. So what we can do is we can build a two-sided marketplace where you have coaches and then you have folks. And then they are all built around the same community where the information and knowledge is free. Right. So that's that idea is what led to creation of squats, um, Fitter Now. And we launched in January 2016, first Jan 2016. 
and with 14 coaches who I had picked and trained. And we were immediately profitable. And by end of the year, we did a business of about a million dollars, put everything back into the company, grew again by 100%. And so we kept growing, um, you know, year after year after year, kept adding more and more coaches. The community continued to thrive. And today we have close to 700 plus coaches. Uh, and we have trained about 250,000 plus customers all the world. Yeah. That Point. is such an inspiring journey because I honestly, I think I literally visualized every single step that you have uh, taken. And it honestly, like literally gives me goosebumps right now because I really want to be where you are in the next four or five years time, because it's such a powerful thing to do to inspire people and to give them guidance and to change their lives and i'm pretty sure the start to the starting 200 people themselves would have been super 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 in love with you uh yeah. to be able to spread that love across more people yeah. and the kind of power that you might have had uh in their life the kind of influence that you might have had in their life would have shaped more or less the basis of what squad slash fitter was way back then and yeah and the entire idea of like coaching the coaches first and then taking up the information to a more variety of audience and different options i think that was a masterstroke in the journey right because that would have been the game changer for you yeah in terms of coaching the coaches what was the approach that you took in terms of coaching the coaches was it a fixed plan that, okay, you know what, these are my set of rules and this is what my approach has been in terms of what fitness is. This is my ideology. It might be hypertrophy based. It might be these certain set of ideas that I follow. And this is how you end up coaching. Or you had more comprehensive kind of a coaching pattern for all these coaches, the first batch. I'm pretty sure that now it, have, it might be like super comprehensive. But earlier, what was the approach of coaching the coaches? Right. So earlier, uh, the coaches were primarily people who I had uh, personally coached, right? So those were the guys who were kind of my clients and they kind of already knew what I was doing, right? So they already were familiar with my style of coaching, which was very no nonsense. And again, I'm a very strict coach, right? So, so in the beginning, even fitter coaches used to be extremely strict. Uh, even now, some of the oldest fitter coaches, right? They're they very, very strict. The new coaches, they're soft. They, they are a lot more understanding but the old coaches you know they were like super strict and that has always been my uh life's motto like you have to be strict you have to be disciplined and you have to walk the talk right uh so i think these guys were already familiar with my style of coaching and i told them one thing if people are paying you money they're paying you for results and if they don't get results you don't deserve that money right uh, so i think trust accountability and the fact that people could just get results I think that's what worked and that that was it. you know so give people results if they don't get results give them the money back guarantee and hold yourself accountable to their results and just like i'm training you and i'm providing you a livelihood see if you can also do the same for your clients and that's exactly what happened today after almost like six years we have generations of coaches which means that one coach who trained let's say x number of clients out of those clients x number of Clients became coaches again, and then those people trained more clients. And then out of those clients, some people. So we have like branches which go up to six generations like this. So where I've trained somebody who trained somebody who trained somebody who trained somebody who trained somebody, who trained somebody and is now a coach. And uh, surprisingly, seventy percent of all fitter coaches cumulatively uh, were actually our ex-customers. Wow. I'm spreading the love so much that people who have taken knowledge from you want to impart the knowledge to other people. That's and, literally how it works. Yeah, mm -hmm. literally. People want to become uh, fitter coaches. And, uh, you know, the fact that our coaches are not just your regular guys, but, you know, I am grads, uh, bankers, doctors, lawyers, surgeons. Um, and, you know, they give up their jobs uh, to become fitter coaches. It kind of uh, seals the deal, right? That mm -hmm. There is something about being a fitter coach yeah and changing the massive dogma that people have for the fitness industry as a whole absolutely that has been the best part because um, i'm personally one thing which i've been observed which, which i've been observing since over the years is like the change in perception towards fitness as a career has been tremendous now a lot of people take it as a first career otherwise in the last 10 years, before 10 years, I'm, I'm pretty sure that fitness wasn't perceived as one of those lucrative 
No, when we when we Hello. ventured out, when we ventured out, uh, this was actually one of our motto that look, uh, no matter what we do, if we want to evangelize the fitness industry, first we're going to need really good people. Right, uh, we we can't do away with 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 regular coaches who who don't know how to communicate, who don't know how to train people, who don't understand the subtleties or nuances of human behavior and psychology and stuff. Right, so we said we need good people, we need amazingly uh, talented people, but those people are not gonna leave their comfortable jobs and come and become coaches. Right, so so we had to evangelize the entire coaching bit. And the first thing we did was we made sure that our coaches become as financially secure. as anybody else out in the industry right so today also if you look at our cumulative coach retention it's about 95% which means historically out of 700 coaches 95% coaches have stayed with the company right and these coaches make enough money so our top coaches end up making more than most uh, guys in it with 20 25 years of experience right and we want that and we celebrate that fact my question to you is mm-hmm. in this entire process of making fitness that successful for these coaches and making that amount of uh, revenue generation stream for a lot of other coaches what kind of marketing did you do or was it always organic in terms of how you grew or was it like you get you know what i have to make sure that i am pushing in or i am pumping in money in order to make sure that the brand itself grows so actually we were uh, largely organic we still are largely organic bearing the couple of months where we where we did some marketing but for the first i'd say good 5 years we were completely organic and for 4 years we were bootstrap right so we got into yc around 2019 uh, 2020 sequoia funding happened even after that we stayed organic as in bootstrap as in without any kind of marketing and marketing really kicked in last year 2021 right so we did some marketing for a period of about 3 months to test our hypothesis and then again we are back to organic right so uh, so we i would attribute all of our growth i'd say 99% of our growth is 100% organic where people just talk about us because you know they're happy um and if you look at the fitter community most of the people you know they just post their transformation stories tag their coaches they're feeling grateful that their lives have changed and sometimes you know people just can't believe that something like fitter could exist where you know everybody out there is kind of screwing them taking money and the transformations while they look amazing They're not really real transformations, but when they join Fitter and then they themselves post the transformation pictures, I think it gives a lot more confidence to people who are part of the community because they're not hearing from us; they're hearing it from real people, right? So it's real people, real stories, which kind of makes this entire communication bit a lot more easier for us. And that has always worked for us historically and still continues to be one of our uh, biggest flywheels. You know, people talking about Fitter. people referring fitter in fact we did a survey um like it was a third party survey and they found out that 46% people who come to fitter actually come through uh, referrals of their friends and family so oh wow. wow. and that kind of atomic marketing only happens once your product is full proof and once you understand what kind of people you are catering to and what is okay let me uh, take it back that kind of atomic market can only atomic marketing can only be possible once a product is that developed and you are so good at what you do it's phenomenal man like i'm i'm super i'm super inspired i don't think so i'm at a point where i can say i'm super impressed but i'm super inspired to uh, be better at what i do for now in terms of my coaching and how do i go about coaching people and yeah i can totally resonate with the fact that unlock also grew whatever we have grown is only because the kind of conversations have been happening about the brand itself is at a dinner table conversation because it's it's so powerful for us to be a part of a conversation where people it's it's unsolicited advice it's it's about all those things and you know what you should be joining that because that coach is nice you should be doing that because it's more flexible you should be that because it's fun and all these little things coming in from a person that you know who was never into fitness recommending yeah. you something which is even remotely related to fitness you start taking it seriously and no amount of marketing would be yeah. able to like have that kind of penetration no absolutely you know because uh, health and fitness is a touchy subject and uh, you wouldn't go to a doctor who's who's just big on marketing right yeah. you typically learn from a good doctor a great doctor or even great lawyers for that matter from you know friends friends and family members because it's a very touchy subject so you want to trust people who have been trusted by people you trust 
right? And that's where our word of mouth marketing is so important. And I think that's why we we always focus on NPS as one of our North Star metrics, right? So our NPS is um, way higher than the industry average. And I think that that continues to uh, drive our organic growth, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that really works for us. And we focus more on that because, you know, if something is working well, why would you not augment that, right? So that, that has always been our focus. Just make sure people get results. People are super happy. And, uh, you know, they, they bring in more friends and family members. Um, and if they're happy, they'll do that, right? So that's, that's the focus. Got it. JC, how do you make sure that the patrons and the customers and the coaches themselves abide to being as close as possible to what they're expected to do in terms of the nutrition program, in terms of following the workout program and all these things, because I'm pretty sure that Indian market that way kind of takes it super easy. We have so many festivals coming in. We have so many occasions coming in. Everything is going sideways right now. So the idea of inculcating accountability in this demography that you are catering to is very difficult, right? So how do you make sure that we end up following that? You cater to these individuals and you make sure that these guys are seeing that changes. Is it still the strict approach that you had earlier or now you have to kind of like surf your way around it? No, um, I don't coach people anymore because I know that there are better coaches in Twitter than me. And uh, some of these coaches are so amazing uh, that, uh, you know, like my wife is getting trained by one of the coaches, right? Uh, she wouldn't get trained by me, by the way. <laughs> uh-huh. So I think now we have shifted the focus more towards behavioral training, uh, habit building, which is just the core of uh, sustainable fitness, right? Um, it's not just about fitness and nutrition. Like you can teach them about quantified nutrition. You can teach them about you know deficit and surplus and talk about hypertrophy and everything. And But unless until they inculcate these things and they're deep subconscious, you know, they won't be able to implement it. Like, for example, I stayed around 365 days, you know, it doesn't matter winter, this or that. But I'm also a super strict kind of a guy and I can't expect everybody to be like me. And people have their own set of goals, own set of challenges. They have their own personal problems, health problems, you know, and the pandemic and everything. They need an approach which is, let's say, filled with a lot of understanding and compassion, um, you know, and faith and trust, which means that, The coaches are trained in a certain manner where they're supposed to train them like champions or champions in the making, right? So every client is treated like a star. That's where the magic lies. And the coaches are told that, you know, every client of you has a potential to become another you. And you have potential to become another somebody, you know, important. So it's, it's all about understanding how big of a role you are playing in this entire thing and 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 that you're really making um you know difference to people's lives and when when people who have been struggling with their issues and not just weight issues they've been struggling with their let's say uh, so we have cancer survivors we have people who have come out of diabetes we have people who have lost their limbs all sorts of people right and when 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 you see all of those people coming out and uh, you know being happy being part of this fitter community i think everybody kind of gets a sense of responsibility and the sense of responsibility, I think it's more like a culture thing. So we develop the culture on top and then the whole culture then flows uh, from the top. So we as leaders have a huge responsibility and we try to keep up the culture and then the mid-level managers and then coaches and then eventually the community moderators, everybody you know, follows the same culture. The culture is simple. Uh, we take care of everybody. We provide a safe and judgment-free space. And everybody from any background can get fitter. That's the idea. Like no judgment whatsoever. I love the narrative that you've said for the brand itself, because that is such an important aspect of how you are perceived and how the trust develops at the most cellular level, right? Because you have to make sure that it's more abstract. You can't always, in whatever my journey has been, I've observed that you can't have a very definitive approach towards no, you something which is that abstract. It's so powerful to be able to relate to everyone. Yeah. It's so powerful to understand like what the kind of lifestyle is, what is the problem is, what kind of like difficulties do they have? And we have no idea. I mean, like yeah. me sitting over here as a 29 year old guy, I would have no idea what somebody else is going through or what a mom is going through, what a grandmom yeah. is going through. 
and that approach i think is probably the most powerful way of coaching somebody because we are like literally having the reins on of the physical aspect and then it transcends more towards that and then it changes their mental aspect also absolutely that's i'm super happy that where i'm i'm pretty sure but a lot of us at least 90% of the population who have met in the fitness industry itself have a similar approach i think when you've been working on for such a long time uh, when you've been coaching for such a long time and you end up meeting so many people the approach changes it becomes a bit more fluid it becomes yeah. a bit more easy going it bit more becomes empathetic yeah yeah and yeah and you have been doing that since years now amazing amazing i'm loving this conversation let's take a small break and come back in okay. 30 to 40 seconds and i want to speak about the journey where fito itself grew on and you had sequoia you uh, i think yc uh, you you were guided by yc i commented yeah, for, for a, for a brief time yeah i quit yc after i think 3 to 4 weeks yeah lovely i'm super excited to have that conversation with you we'll be back okay. in less than a minute uh this is a raw and organic conversation with jitendra choksi and yo we are hey everybody it's been another great week on the ivm podcast network kin neeti completes 200 episodes rajiv mishra nikhil chopra and rajkumar sharma discuss the final test match between india and south africa they also talk about whether or not virat will return as captain on think fast for honest chita dig into apple's 3 trillion dollar market cap and bezos chirag then uncle look for new year's eve On Raw and Organic, Kunal talks to pole fitness trainer and flexibility coach Joanna Michelle. On Pesa Vesa, Anupam finds out how REITs are beneficial from Vinod Rohira. He's the CEO of Mindspace Business Park REIT. And on Filter Coffee, Karthik talks to sports journalist Pradeep Magazine about his new book, Not Just Cricket. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. We really do appreciate the word of mouth. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms that you're listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever it is. And we are also on YouTube. On YouTube, you can check out our various channels on ivmpodcast.com/youtube. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, Bank of Baroda and CoinSwitch Kuber. Thank you for making this possible. And we are back. I'm speaking to JC of Fitter and one thing which has intrigued me is the fitness space in terms of business itself i think it's massive they say that the penetration of fitness industry in india is less than 0.1% in grand scale of things that gives a massive room for opportunity for everyone okay fitter right now is the biggest player in its segment i want to know how you have reached to a point where you are at a point where you literally the most googled search i did the survey last time it was like okay well like indian fitness and i saw the graph and the most googled ecosystem was fitter after indian fitness okay so how do you reach to a point where you are so big that you are the biggest google searched entity in a country of 1.3 billion people <laughs> uh it's a good question i'm not sure i know the answer to that but uh i think it's a uh, it's just a lot of repeat action you know uh, something that works you just uh, go on doing that again and again and again and at one point of time we become so good at it that you know everybody just knows that hey, if you want to get fit just get fitter and fitter is the best place if you want to get fit fitter is the best place if you want to transform your life fitter is the best place if you want to become a coach right so so i i think these in our conversations like you mentioned i think it's that largely and the fact that we keep coming up in news for different kinds of reasons the transformations keep getting featured on different kinds of channels a lot of viral videos have come out of fitter i think all those things kind of add on eventually so it's it's largely the compounding effect of repeating the same thing again and again which is just making people fit you know with very high satisfaction rate that's important but you can't pinpoint on any aspect right it was like it's an amalgamation of everything it's everything it's everything yeah this is interesting right now you are a massively funded company how did this entire idea start that you need a different 
entity in uh, to grow your business because i'm pretty sure the way that uh, all the revenues were working and the company was largely profitable why did you go on and why did you get in investors to grow your company from point a to point b so one of the things i want to highlight here is that we are not the largest in terms of share size um there are other players in the business cult uh, you might have heard about them healthy family although we are not in the same category as cult but healthy family is uh, a closest a closest competitor i'd say we closely resemble to what they do right so we are not the only a uh, big player in the in the country there are others also and i think the thought behind taking investor money is is simple that the economy is growing and what happens is if you continue to bootstrap uh you know you do come across a lot of challenges right bootstrapping a business is super difficult first of all and i'm not saying that once you are heavily funded it's not difficult it's of course uh, even more difficult but at least you are worried about one less thing which is money in the bank right when you are bootstrap you have to do things in a very scrappy manner and sometimes you know even to get better quality videos you have to think twice because everything comes at a cost right so you are either thinking about profitability or you are thinking about giving the best quality to your customers and sometimes managing this fine balance brings you a lot of headache yeah. and so and so sometimes what you do is uh, you basically take somebody's money you promise them the growth and you deliver all that quality which money can buy and then you give it to your customers and once you grow you know investors are super happy so you're growing you're profitable you're able to cater to your customers in a better manner and you can reach out to many more customers in a shorter frame of time right so that's that's the idea behind taking investment and that's the idea for us to take investment i'm i'm sure companies have their own reason but that that's our reason we were very scrappy we were very frugal in the way we were operating we did not we could not hire we could not afford people um, you know because when you grow to an extent like i was playing the role of mr jack of all trades and uh, i uh, you know like we did not have proper product managers we did not have product leaders and everything was built in a very very scrappy manner and uh, i think once we got the sequoia funding the first thing we did was we started hiring people and uh, that's also one of the most important thing we did once we did our series a funding we started hiring people who are experts in their respective domains and look i don't have a formal education in business i was an engineer i still don't have a lot of knowledge about business i'd say i'm just a guy with a lot of common sense street smart but there are subtle aspects of business there are nuances there are there's so many things which i can't possibly learn or even if i start learning i won't be able to execute them and 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 in the next few years right and that's why i need experts and these experts don't come cheap right so if you want these experts and they need a promise the experts don't come just for money you know they come because there's a promise in the startup the startup is going to hyper growth it's going to blitz scale it's going to you know reach a 10x where they have esops and equities which will eventually multiply right nobody wants money these days everybody is looking for equity in esops and those equities and esops are far less worth when you continue to bootstrap um also the chances of you building a massive company bootstrapping are very very rare right although we had achieved a very respectable scale i don't think we would have we would be able to achieve similar kind of growth in the next 5 years or 10 years if we hadn't raised funds right so i think funding just made us worry less about a few things getting the right kind of experts without worrying about how much they are costing and just not worrying about money in the bank while providing quality to our customers the guidance that comes in with your investors coming in was also massive because the kind of input that they yeah. have yeah do you choose yeah, absolutely investors? well yeah i mean we did kind of choose our investors if we if we talk about a y combinator y combinator is one of the most reputed you know accelerator yeah. programs in the world it's yeah. a, it's the mecca for companies like uh, you know airbnb stripe and so many right like literally thousands of top companies which you know they, they the genesis is yc right so when we made it to yc i was pretty excited when there i thought i'd get a lot of help which i did kind of in the first week when i spoke to some of the founders like airbnb reddit and all those that that interaction itself itself was so powerful but afterwards um i just felt that i was not getting what i came here for and so i quit and then i came back and then we were approached by sequoia search the promise was great mentorship right and i would say sequoia delivered on that promise like 100% i i'd say 200% because 
the kind of mentorship that we went through uh, during our Sequoia search program, it just opened my eyes. And uh, yeah, so we made a conscious choice to switch to Sequoia over YC. Then even now, when we're looking for our Series A, uh, we had discussions with multiple investors and we went with the ones which we had most synergy with, right? So first thing was that fitness and the second was community oriented. We wanted to partner with investors who understand fitness or sports, right? And they come from a community outlook, right? So at no point of time, we wanted to have investors on board who would wake up and say, JC, this community is not working for you. Leave it behind. Like we were like, no, we are going to be a community oriented business always. And so we made that conscious choice. And that's amazing because I think all those decisions of like shifting from YC to Sequoia would have been like a very difficult decision to take, right? Crazy. Easy? <laughs> no, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It a was lot of people, yeah, a lot of people called me a madman and they were like, what the f*** are you doing? Why would you do that? Like nobody leaves YC. And yeah. I think in the history of YC, I might be the only idiot guy who, who actually quit YC. So, but I, that, that's, that's how I am. I'm, I'm impulsive. You know, I'm impulsive. Something doesn't work. I just don't like, if I'm mentally out of that place, I'm, I'm out of that place. You know, I'm very impulsive that way. Yeah. And sometimes it, the gut feeling really matters a lot more than anything else. Yeah. For me, it's always been my gut feeling. I always go by the gut. For me, yeah, I'm sure numbers and everything is good. But if my gut tells me something else, I'd follow my gut always. Beautiful. So now what is coming in the future? I'm pretty sure that right now we are literally peaking in terms of, I mean, like it's not even like reaching its peak, but uh, in a grand scheme of things, this is the highest amount of like Indians working out in ever. Like if you think the entire timeline, this is literally the highest amount of people working out in this country. What, what are the next steps immediate steps that you as a company will be taking and are you trying to change anything in a way that well, you know what I want to create this product that will make sure that my penetration is deeper I want to do something which is going to like help uh, people reach their fitness goals faster or anything that uh, that companies at uh, that level end up uh, planning or you want to make sure that I don't know what your, your reach, uh, what your approach has been. So what are your approach going to be in the next two to three years? Uh, so we are going to continue building what we have been building, right? And which is a no-nonsense approach to fitness. I don't think there's a parallel which exists, uh, which is which is like 100% bang on, right? When it comes to people's money or when it comes to people's results. So I think we have a very strong moat around our coaching, the way we deliver the coaching, the way this community. And we are going to continue strengthening these moats. Um, also, because we have trained so many people over the years, it kind of has a compounding effect, right? Which is not going to wear off anytime soon. So without shifting any focus from what we primarily do, and it's, it's really important that we keep hyper-focus on what we have done so well, we are going to probably extend into more synergistic businesses, which is like uh, fitness for kids, fitness for elderly, fitness for lactating mothers, right? So very synergistic business verticals. Apart from that, I think we continue uh, getting more into challenges. We've seen that people really love challenges. And so that way we are also continuing to modify our existing product. We are making it better, the UX UI is simpler, adding more and more free tools to have, uh, you know, like uh, users don't just come for coaching, but I mean, they, they come for coaching, but they stay back for uh, everything else that, that we offer for free, right? So I, I think these are some of the things that we are going to do in uh, probably next, 12 to 18 months time frame and then then we'll see where we where we go from there yeah so if it's if something is working you don't want to change anything after a point we want to make it better yeah okay yeah. got it uh, one thing which i wanted to ask you and uh, this comes from a personal agenda mm-hmm. as a community driven business how difficult it is to maintain that love for the community months on month year on year and so on and so on uh, because in terms of fitness itself, it becomes redundant. I mean, yeah. fitness itself is redundant. I mean, if you want to see growth, it's all about repetition. It's all about like yeah. making sure that you are increasing the pound. It's, it's all about overload. It's all about like doing the grit work days on end. And because of whatever is happening right now and everything which is being served in a massive platter, people will always have different options, right? Yeah. So how do you make sure that you as a community keep on reinventing itself or make sure that you are still holding people's attention where 
attention deficit is a massive problem so i think look fitter has multiple flywheels right one of the biggest flywheel is that uh, fitter offers jobs and so far we have about 700 coaches in future we'd probably have thousands of coaches right and so people who are part of the community they eventually go on to learn more about fitness and nutrition and we have another company called INFS which is a sister concern it's a, it's a subsidiary of uh, and which offers you training in different areas right so a lot of people from the community then kind of go and enroll with INFS and then eventually they either become fitter coaches or they start their own businesses right so we are generating a lot of jobs which i think is super super critical in today's times and uh, i think that's that that also kind of holds the community together apart from this the fact that it's not just a fitness community we do a lot of work in general you know so we do a lot of charitable work we donated a substantial amount for covid we have volunteers in almost every city in the world today 8000 plus volunteers right so we literally do everything that any ideal citizen should be doing and i think that's what makes this community so beautiful it's not just about fitness uh, we believe that fitness is like basic hygiene and once you have achieved this basic hygiene you don't have to worry about it anymore and then you can focus your attention your intent on bigger and better things in your life like for instance i don't spend my entire day in the gym i don't spend my entire day you know creating my meals for the entire week you know because for me it's like you know waking up brushing my teeth exercising preparing food and done and then i have my rest of the day which i plan for my family which i plan for the fitter community which i do for self indulgence you know so uh, we don't go out there and tell people hey fitness is your life that's crazy we would never say that thing right? we just say that fitter is a, a fitness is basic hygiene and i think people people kind of come to fitter community for fitness but they stay back for much more you know it's a, more like and then the coaches themselves right they are financially very successful uh, they are physically mentally socially very successful so people come for physical fitness but then they stay back for mental social and financial success right you yeah, have figured because fitness will be the funnel brings people to the funnel and then what makes them stay is you can't put a finger on it because it's so more diverse yeah, uh, it's, it's a lot more. of people might stay yeah. for a lot of different reasons yeah and also like the beautiful part about the community is and i can say so because i have built up a community is the feeling of making sure that okay you know what no matter what happens there is somebody else who is more or less going through either rough times or similar times and still showing up for workout or still showing up and doing things and then you start having a dialogue with these people yeah. and you share bonds you share new relationships and i think those relationships are so beautiful and yeah i'm i'm excited to see what fitter comes up in the uh, and how it grows in the future all the best for everything that you're doing yeah. thank you for changing and enhancing the way that fitness has perceived in india in different cities and making it accessible for a lot of us and thank you for educating a lot of other coaches and i can say so being one of those people who have been in the industry since a very long time and i know that the power that you've had and yeah thank you thank you so much i really That's hope that you enjoyed this conversation this is all that i had to ask and i'm pretty sure that the listeners also would have some questions so if they have some certain questions how do they reach out to you they can drop me a mail at jc@fedora.com they can tag me in their post on insta or uh, you know i'm i'm typically available on my email <laughs> like if you if you send me an email i'd probably reply back almost immediately lovely yeah and yeah that is one thing which i have to learn amazing so that's jitendra choksi of fitter and uh, this was the roan organic conversation with the founder of fitter it was an amazing conversation i really hope you enjoyed this is kunal rajput signing off and If you want to reach out to JC you can always uh, send him a mail or you can reach out to him on his Instagram. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed and if you did just let us know that you enjoyed. Thank you so much. Thanks thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Eventually you'll see the end of your childhood, get accustomed to womanhood, enjoy the experience of sisterhood, might get to wifehood or not. choose motherhood or not 
you learn to define your personhood earn a livelihood change the neighborhood and get rid of the falsehood that life post academia is easy so join me ritasha and me ayushi on a journey from station starting point to station um what now next station pudding station and hopefully agla station adulthood fresh episodes out every thursday Working Monday to Friday glued to your chair making you feel dull? Worry not. Get your 5 minute weekly dose of travel around the world with postcards from nowhere. Join me every Thursday as I explore the strange, obscure and fascinating parts of the world and bring out facets of travel you may not have thought of before. You can find us on the IVM podcast app, website or wherever you get your podcast from.